God is good. We serve a good God, a righteous God and a holy God. It's just good to know the truth. It's good to hear the truth proclaimed. There is salvation in the truth. There is salvation in the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe, both to the Jew and to the Greek, to the Jew and to the Gentile. There is salvation in the gospel. There is salvation in the truth. When the truth of the gospel is rightly divided, it reveals the love of God. When the truth of the gospel is rightly divided of wisdom, it reveals the love of God, whereby we gain faith in God. You need to know the truth. You need to have an understanding. As Prophet Sinetrius explained, you need to know the truth of the gospel. You need to understand the truth of the gospel. You need to get an understanding. The Apostle Paul or the uh, Solomon wrote, said, with all thy gettings, get an understanding. You need to know the truth. You need to know the truth. Understand what Christ has done. Know what he's done. Know it. You know, so many people just walk with tradition. They just walk with the words of men. and They don't know what the Bible actually teaches. They don't know what Christ has done. They don't know as it's written in Hebrews 10 and 9, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. They don't know that Christ had to go through suffering and death to take away the first testament, the Old Testament, and to redeem man's sins of the Old Testament, as it's recorded in Hebrews 9 and 15. They don't know what he had to go through to take away the first that he had to go through what he went through to take away the first before he could even give the second. People don't know that. They don't know why when they take communion that there's a separation in the bread and the cup. They don't have an understanding of what they are doing. Because traditional church, traditional men, theologians and commentaries don't explain. So people don't know the Bible. They don't know that Christ had to die for man's shortcoming of the Ten Commandments and laws and move that covenant to establish a new covenant. He had to move that testament and the covenant of that testament by fulfilling the law that is dying in the place of mankind dying back then over 2012 years ago more or less for the sins and the shortcoming of the Ten Commandments and law. Christ substituted for man back then that he may give a new testament. Everybody ain't crossed over yet. Everybody don't know the gospel. And in this time, in these generations, the gospel has been lost. Since the, the Gentiles took over the teaching and the leadership to the church or Christianity among most men and people of this world, the gospel was lost. Since the apostles lost that control and first came in Roman Catholicism or the Roman religion took control, the gospel was lost. And men don't know. They actually think that they got it. And what was passed down from Roman Catholicism and you know Constantine and so forth and his concept in a Roman Catholic doctrine and as for the apostles teaching, and though they were under apostles, they were persecuted. What they were saying was lost. What the Bible was talking about was lost when the Gentiles took control. And then later down through the years, the Protestant came into being. You know of John Calvin, and you know of Martin Luther, and a lady named Beulah, those who, were, who protested against the Roman Catholic church, they became known as the protesters, which is called today the Protestant 
I mean, those who protested against the Roman Catholic doctrine and the corruption that was in the Roman Catholic Church. That's what it's called today, the protesters or the Protestant. They also didn't get it right and don't have it right. The doctrine that is taught today don't agree with the Jewish text of the Bible, the New Testament. There's also written of in the Old Testament. Some people say that Judaism is the belief of not believing in Jesus. There is no Judaism that don't believe in Jesus. The rabbis in Israel that don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah are not teaching Judaism. Because you can read even in the law of Moses, the proclamation of Christ coming to be the king of Israel. You can read it throughout the prophets in the Old Testament. They proclaim Christ coming, the Messiah's coming as the king of Jerusalem. There is no other Judaism. Jesus is the king of Judah. He is the king of the Jews. In religion, or you hear the Gentile talk about Judaism is not belief in Christ, that's a lie. Judaism is the belief in Jesus. Paul said, he that is not a Jew within, it's not a Jew now, not unto God. True Jews, both the sin of Abraham and those who have been grafted into the Jewish body of the Gentiles are those who believe in Jesus. That's Judaism. That's true Judaism. You need to understand the truth. When I teach, I teach from the website and God directed me to tell it black Judaism because as black Jews as I am, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Black Jew of Judah claiming the truth of salvation unto all mankind, Jews and Gentiles. You need to understand the truth. You need to know God's word. Christ had to take away the first to establish the second. You need to know that. It is written of the Apostle Paul in Hebrews 15 and 3. He said for, as he wrote to him in verse 1, some over brethren, this is Paul giving his testimony. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1, I want to start at. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I also, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Did you know that when Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgression, that he was talking about his people of Israel? He wasn't talking about the Gentiles. He wasn't talking about the Gentiles seeing or having sins of the law. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about his people of Israel. Be it so, God did take away the first testament and also he was made under the knowledge of good and evil. That is with a sinful nature of knowing right from wrong that is to redeem them who were condemned by the knowledge of good and evil of the Gentiles that is. But when Isaiah wrote that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our, and he was talking to his people. When Paul wrote and said that he said, I live on you, brethren, that which also I receive, how Christ died for our, you got to take that pronoun and properly apply it. He was writing to the Corinthians over 2,012 years ago, more or less. You got to put it in context. You may not like that kind of intelligence, but you got to use it. He said, I live on you, brethren, that which I also received, tell them his testimony that he had to learn it. Because, see, Paul was alive before Christ is dead. So he had sins under the law. And the Corinthians that he's writing to, note the letters written to the Corinthians. You want to read the word our and see the pronoun there? You've got to put it in context. The Corinthians he's writing to, these people were born or living before Christ is dead. 
You have to put the scripture in context. As Paul wrote in Hebrews 10 and 15, I mean 9 and 15, his death was for the redemption of the transgressions under the first testament. He don't contradict himself. The Bible bears witness to itself. As he wrote in Romans 5 and 6, he said that while we were yet sinners, writing to the Romans, Paul and the Romans he wrote to were yet sinners when Christ died. You weren't even born today. You got to get the scripture in context. See, he had to take away the first before he could establish the second. You got to learn the Bible. You got to learn the Jewish text. The Gentiles don't know. The European theology and European Christianity in many areas do not agree with Judeo Christianity or the teaching of the Bible that you have on your dresser, in your house, that you read every Sunday. You got to rightly divide the Word of God. You got to understand the Gospel. Paul was alive and had sins before Christ's death and resurrection. And even after Christ's death, Paul went about persecuting the church. Don't you know Paul was giving his testimony here? He gave his testimony of his salvation. Don't cover that up to say that he meant Christ died for your sins. You are not under the Old Testament as the people of Corinth were. You are not under the Old Testament as the people he wrote to in Rome or, or that he wrote to Romans in Romans 7. said, brethren, you become dead to the law by the body of Christ. And he wrote that to them over 2,000 years ago. Please accept the word of God in truth. I understand that some people just follow the crowd. Some people just follow tradition and not understand it. But you need to know that the truth reveals the love of God. The truth of the gospel, rightly divided, reveals the love of God. Paul was of a transition generation, which means he was alive before Christ died, and he was alive after Christ's resurrection. He, the Romans, and the Corinthians they wrote to the of age. They were the transition generation. They were alive before Christ's death. They were alive after Christ's resurrection. They were alive under both testaments. You got to understand when he says in Romans 10, he takes away the first, then he may establish the second. That there has been a change made. Now men can be born or must be born into the kingdom of heaven. The cover of the Old Testament was the Ten Commandment law written on the stones of the table and in a book. The color of the New Testament is the Holy Spirit. God said in Jeremiah 31, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers. But I will make a new covenant. I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts in their mind. Referring to the Holy Spirit. And the writer of Hebrews in the 10th chapter refers back to this scripture in Galatians 31. To make that point, the Holy Ghost it's the covenant of the New Testament. Whereas the law was the covenant of the Old Testament, now the covenant of the New Testament is the Holy Ghost. The same law, but in a different form, in the form of His Spirit. Now you must be born of the law of God, even the law of His nature, of His own being. You've got to be born into the kingdom of heaven now. And Christ, before He can give this, through his will and testament, through the blood of his testament that was shed after his death, which came into force at his resurrection by the Father, raising him by the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got to be born now of the Holy Ghost to be a part of Christ. You are Gentile. 